If you need to stop vulnerabilities from coming across your network and attacking your services, then you want to use something like a network intrusion detection system or network-based intrusion prevention system. These are designed to stop the bad guys from taking advantage of vulnerabilities that might be in your operating systems, they might be in the applications that you use, all kinds of different problems like cross-site scripting and buffer overflows, anything where a bad guy could take advantage of code to somehow gain additional access to your resources. Sources. There's two types of systems you'll run into. One is a intrusion detection system, and one is the intrusion prevention system. The intrusion detection system does exactly like the name sounds. It detects, it identifies, it logs, it lets you know that someone was trying to take advantage of a vulnerability that may be in an operating system or an application, but it doesn't stop anything. That's why we created intrusion prevention systems. Intrusion prevention systems can not only identify when somebody is trying to take advantage of these vulnerabilities, but it can stop the traffic as it's flowing through the network. So the traffic passes through the IPS. The IPS identifies that someone is trying to use an exploit against one of your servers, and it simply drops the traffic. It does not allow that to ever get to the server. Even if the server was not patched, it was susceptible to that problem, the IPS would have stopped those packets before they ever got down to the server. If you want to try some of these intrusion prevention systems yourself, you can try one called Snort. It's open source. It's available for download. You can try it yourself. And you can download it at snort.org. There are also a number of live CDs that you can grab. So you can simply put it into a machine, boot that machine up from the CD or the DVD itself. And now you're running a full-blown Snort intrusion detection or intrusion prevention system. In an enterprise, you have very high-speed networks. There's 1 gigabit per second, 10 gigabits per second, multiple 10 gig links going through the core of a network. And in those scenarios, you need something that's really designed for speed. So in an enterprise, you often see the intrusion prevention system also integrated into a piece of hardware. That way, you're able to still maintain the ability to watch the traffic and to stop the bad guys from taking advantage of your servers. But it can do it at a very, very high rate of speed. Another nice feature of these intrusion prevention systems in an enterprise is they are designed for uptime. You can put these in in a high availability mode. If one device fails, the other one picks up the slack and continues to allow the traffic through the network. And they're also designed to report back all of this information to a centralized facility that perhaps is running something like Syslog. That way, you can go to a single console that is getting reports from every single IPS in your organization, and you can view them all on one screen. Another popular way of preventing these exploits is having the intrusion prevention right on the host. This host-based intrusion prevention is simply software we would run on our workstation that examines all the traffic coming into our device. It's usually a separate application, although these days we're seeing the host-based intrusion prevention integrated in with antivirus and other utilities that are already running on the servers that you have out there. These are usually blocking information based on signatures that are coming through and you're constantly updating the database. The process is very similar to the network-based intrusion prevention. The advantage you have with a host-based intrusion prevention is a lot more detail of what's happening on the device. You can see if applications are trying to change a particular file. If an application starts up, it's gotten through our network-based intrusion prevention, it's gotten to the host-based intrusion prevention, and it didn't match any of the signatures, but it then tries to modify the host file on our web server, that's going to throw a flag. It'll cause the software to stop and prevent those systems from modifying the host file. There shouldn't ever be anything on on your servers that would ever do that. So it makes sense for the host-based intrusion prevention to be able to identify and block it right there on the host. In most environments, you have a mixture of all of these. So you may be running a network-based intrusion prevention on the edge of your network as traffic is coming into the internet. You might have more IPS systems on your server farm or your DMZ. And then you might also deploy the host-based intrusion prevention to make sure that all of the individual devices are also protected as well.